We're ready now to start talking about Newton's laws for rotations. Up till now, we've just de dealt with how to describe motion, and we haven't really described what causes that motion. In the case of Newton's laws for linear motion, we know that forces are what causes cha cause changes in velocity, and forces are what cause accelerations. We're seeking now the similar ro uh, description for rotations. So we have to think a little bit about what, a, what causes a rotation. Let's imagine a mass m on the edge of a wheel which has radius r. And we'll imagine that we're going to pull with a force f on that mass to produce a linear acceleration off in some direction. But remember that that's also just going to cause the wheel to spin. Newton's second law of motion states that a force will equal mass times acceleration. So F equals MA. But since that A is going to be related to how fast we get the wheel to start spinning, or the merry-go-round to start spinning, that's also equal to M times R times alpha. But we also know that a force by itself is not enough to start producing an angular acceleration. It was important that I pulled out at the rim of that wheel and not at the center of the wheel, otherwise I wouldn't have gotten the wheel to spin. Pulling at large r produces help, helps produce a large angular acceleration, which is why doorknobs are out near the edges of doors away from the hinges. So if we're looking for something that's like uh, Newton's law equation, f equals ma, the thing on the left side of that equation shouldn't just be the force, but how far away we're pulling with that force. So I want something that looks like an r times f. If we multiply f equals ma by, on both sides, by r, then we're going to have rf equals rma, or that, since a is equal to r alpha, that's m r squared alpha, or I'm going to regroup that a little bit. It's something like rf equals m r squared times alpha. This is the beginnings of our Newton's Law type equation for uh, rotations. It's clearly important that force and radius at which you're pulling on that with that force be present in order to get this thing to be spinning well. And all of us who think about having a nice lever or a mechanical advantage on a, on a rotation know that the further out I pull, the bigger mechanical advantage I have. So it's r times f that's important. This thing on the left-hand side of this equation, r times f, is called torque, and it's denoted with a Greek letter tau. Just like Newton's second law, f equals ma, the equation torque equals I alpha is Newton's second law for rotation. So it's more torque produces more al angular acceleration alpha, just like more force equals more linear acceleration A. The only new thing here now is that this quantity I, which is mR squared, is called the rotational moment of inertia. The bigger it is, then the more this object is going to resist going into acceleration mode because of our torque. Just like the bigger a mass is, the more an object will resist accelerating or have inertia against accelerating when we apply a, a linear force. Now technically, a force equation should be a vector equation. Just like f equals ma has vectors on the left and the right hand side, force is a vector, acceleration is a vector, we have to ask where does tau point? Well the angular acceleration points up and out of the page for this example I just gave where I pull to the left and uh, I make this thing speed up counterclockwise. So if alpha is pointing up and out of the page, then it must be also the case that torque is pointing up and out of the page. So the vector equation will be torque the vector is I times alpha the vector. And the way we can actually get torque to be a vector is to say that it's a cross product of R, which always points from the point of pivot out to the point where I'm pulling, and F which is the force direction that I'm pulling. So torque in this example points up and out of the page because R cross F, the vector cross product, points up and out of the page. Remember a great way to do the right hand rule is to start with the fingers of your right hand pointing straight up along R, curl them over till they, so they point to F, and that forces your, point, your thumb to point in the, in the direction of the resulting cross product. So if torque equals r cross f. I should first start with my fingers in the direction of r. I move them over toward the direction of f. And as a result of just how my hand is shaped, it makes my thumb point straight up and out of the page. That's how 
uh, torque will point in this particular case. If I were pulling with a force over to the right, then my right hand rule would make my thumb uh, point into the page because R cross F would make my right hand point into the page. But in the example I just gave, my thumb is pointing up and out of the page, which happens to equal where the torque point vector points to.